the poem is called, Who Would You Be? Who would you be? Who would you be if I tailored my attentions to know you? If I were your guide to the beauty and worth of your subterraneous self? If even your dark spaces were shared and accepted? Who would you be if the warmth of my body melted your defenses? If my light drew you to break ground and you grew tall and opened? Who would you be if I bore faithful witness to your deeds and disappointments, if I wrought the rationale for your risks and abided your life in its wholeness with a swollen heart? Who would you be if I made you laugh when you were taking yourself or life too seriously, if I stayed unafraid while you raged or grieved and then held you when you were spent? Who would you be if I opened my whole self to you? If I said, take what you need, I can make more, and you did. And who would you be if when there was something that I couldn't give, if I said, well, go on then, look for it. May you know joy, may your dreams come true. Who would you be? Who would you be? Who would you be if you were loved properly? Frank, 1969. It takes generations to decipher the individual points that make one whole. The destructive consequences of singular strokes composed of fear that draw a fight into a battle, into a war. To recognize the danger of disdain and apathy, the fallacy of fabricated hate, the vapid space between shadow and light. To see the enormity of privilege, unattainable yet contained in the dark pupil of a girl. Her sphere questioning what is real, unable to fathom the truth in front of her eyes. She will be forced her entire life to negotiate distinctions, a struggle to learn who and what to believe, to trust, to gain control of the particles of her body, to feel composed. Fighting to frame her identity within a narrative that is often black and white, yet she is neither black nor white. To recognize the reflected anger in her own eyes, the poignant power of her face to protest invisibility and to claim the space for her story to be real. <clears throat> she lights the gopal. We take turns throwing herbs into the pot. Rosemary, echinacea, rose hips, sempasuchil. With each herb dropped into the bubbling water, there is a prayer, a wish, a moment of gratitude. We unfold our blankets and rebosos, place them on the wooden floor, close enough to touch, but still enough space for the ancestors. We sip womb wellness tea that Pankatsani has taught us and put on our skirts. We pour the herbs into our bowl, take our positions, straddling as the heat steams its way between our thighs. This is the ritual. This is how we reclaim what we wasn't meant to survive. We steam in prayer, in memory, in gratitude. So this is called Day Sun, Fort Yates, North Dakota, 1934. Let the sun wash your face, my ate always told me. So that's why I go outside every morning and offer my smile to the sky. I come from a long line of hereditary chiefs, leaders who are supposed to put the good of the people ahead of their own desires. My grandfather was the last official chief of our family, but that doesn't stop the people from making their way to my door, bringing their worries and problems to be shared with the one who carries that strong blood. Jozoe, they call me. Jozoe, as they tote their stories into our cabin, along with what scrapes of food they can dig from exhausted soil. I married my husband Indian way, and we have six children now. How can I say that is too many when each one is loved a different way? But the more there are, the less food they have to eat, less room in a crowded bed, less inches of the old army blanket covering them from a frost that coats everything, even their eyelashes. 
I told my husband, we must behave as our ancestors did and quiet our passions for a while so we won't make more children than we can protect. He listens and nods his head. Oh, ha, huh, he agrees. But when he comes by illegal hooch and drinks these angry worms into his brain, he forgets his promises. I try to keep the children around at those times, but they are like dandelion fluff. It is so easy to scatter them to a hundred winds. We are soon alone, and he comes for me like a bull charging a fence. He wants to smash into me, work on me, take me, use me, pound me, until there is no one left, until I am nothing more than a heap of my ancestors' bones. He kills us both with his sex. Women look up to me. Sometimes I see one lift her chin higher when I pass, as if she can see all those who stand behind me, and they have given her strength. There is a parade at my back. I can feel them. Is it me or my ancestors who make the fist and shake it at the sheriff when he is brutal? Together we make a fist and pound the reservation agent's desk when we need answers. There is no battle we are afraid to enter when it comes to our people. But I cannot make that fist against my man. He lost his leg when he was 12 years old, the same age as my oldest boy. It was the fourth time he ran away from Carlisle, the Indian boarding school in Pennsylvania where the agent kept sending him. He slipped as he ran for a freight train and it took its terrible bite. His wood leg pains him even though there's nothing there beyond a crude post attached to his stump. He rubs it the way I sometimes rub my sore feet. On good days, he speaks Dakota and lifts us into another time with his eloquent speech. He feeds the people who are hungry for words they had forgotten, the eloquent speech of wise counselors and storytellers. He doesn't like English because he says it steals the best words and leaves us with fewer than we had the day before. He is all that is good. He is all that is lost. I cannot make that fist. Sorry, there's just one more paragraph. Another child is due. She kicks and complains and wants to run with the others rather than wait in the stillness of my womb. She is a fighter too. She has something to say. I can almost hear her in those first moments when I wake. I stand up to wash my face in the sun, dry my unborn girl's angry tears, which I am crying for her. My bones collect in the sun and make me a woman again. I remember who I am. The parade pushes against my back. I make a fist, but it has nowhere to go. So I open the hand and offer its anger to the dawn. Always the morning sun leaves me smiling. Always the day sun washes my face and restores my breath. The many stand up and help me walk into the next hour. Thank you.